Hi, this is chapter eight of Listen, Sadie. The next day when Charlie gets to the top of the hill by Crazy Sherman's, Sadie doesn't come to her whistle. Charlie doesn't see either dog and she is all the way to the Davis's driveway before she realizes why. The SUV is gone and Sadie is chained to a tree down near the house. Straining at the end of her chain, she barks and jumps towards Charlie, her front feet paw in the air. Coyote is lying under a rhododendron bush, only a few feet from the tree Sadie is chained to. His ears are up and he is watching Charlie. Mrs. Davis has given her permission to unchain Sadie if she wants to. But Charlie decides to leave Sadie chained and try to lure Coyote around the lake on his own. She throws Sadie a biscuit to make up for leaving her. Come on, she calls to Coyote, let's walk. At the word, Coyote comes out from under the rhododendron. That's a big bushy flower. His tail wagging. Charlie drops a biscuit on the driveway. That's yours, she tells him, and walks away from it toward the road. With her mirror, she checks to see if he's coming to get the biscuit. He does. Let's go get lunch, she says, and keeps walking. But he doesn't follow her. In the mirror, she sees that he has stopped in the driveway, ears and tails down. He turns and looks back at Sadie, who is barking now and straining at the leash. Charlie can almost feel the bungee cord pulling him back. The books would call this a training opportunity. She should just go on whether he follows or not. If he doesn't come around to get his lunch today, he'll learn a lesson. He'll know to walk with her tomorrow. Lunch, she calls again. She puts the mirror away and starts walking again. Every living thing is a spirit. This time, Charlie doesn't try to push her mother's voice out of her mind. That was what her mother believed. Charlie does too. The books are about training, controlling human to dog. Charlie wants to work with Coyote spirit to spirit. She doesn't have a book for that. Coyote needs Sadie with him to feel safe, Charlie thinks. She understands. It's like the way she needed Amy with her on the first day of middle school. She goes back, takes Sadie off her chain, and watches the two dogs run a huge circle around the yard, bumping into each other, grabbing at each other's ears. Let's walk, she tells them, and they begin the walk in the way that has come to be their pattern. Sadie dashing ahead of her, Coyote following. Near the bottom of the hill, Coyote is far behind and Sadie comes bounding back as she always does, as if to see what is taking Charlie so long. But this time she makes a lunge for Charlie's walking stick and pulls it out of her hand. Charlie has to grab a kudzu vine to keep from falling. Sadie drags the stick a few feet off the trail and drops it. Then she stands by it, looking up at Charlie, her tongue hanging out, her tail wagging. This isn't the game, Charlie says. I need that stick, bring it back. Sadie gives herself a shake and trots off down the hill across the embankment. Charlie lets go of the kudzu vine and goes to get the stick, moving carefully over uneven ground through the leaf cover. Throwing sticks was a mistake yesterday. Now, Sadie thinks the walking stick is a toy. She picks it up and starts back toward the trail. Sadie comes flying back, grabs the stick, and tugs nearly pulling Charlie off her feet. Charlie has to let go of it to keep from falling. Sadie trots off with the stick, carrying it back through the poison ivy down to the edge of the pond. Then she wades out until the water is up to her chest and drops the stick in the water. To get the stick this time, Charlie will have to plow through poison ivy, maybe wade into the pond. She looks to see where Coyote is and sees that he has stopped at the base of the hill. When she turns towards him, he watches instead of skittering off into the, tre into the trees. Sadie, still standing in the water, barks. Then she splashes along the edge of the pond, bounces across the spillway, shakes herself and starts up the hill on the other side. Charlie, furious, stands a while longer, trying to figure out if she can get her stick back and then gives up. 
She'll just have to find a replacement in the woods as she goes. When she gets to the spillway, she realizes that walking without her stick doesn't hurt much more than walking with it, at least on level ground. Charlie steps carefully, gingerly, across the spillway, balancing with her arms out on both sides as she steps from one broken chunk of concrete to the next. When she has made it to the other side, she uses the dangling root to pull herself up to the fallen tree and climbs onto it. Coyote, a few feet back on the trail, stops, waits until she's settled, then runs across the spillway and up to the trail to catch up with Sadie. He passes no more than a foot from where Charlie is sitting. She listens to the dogs tussling with each other somewhere up the hill. Coyote has always stayed behind her, ready to leap off the trail if she turns towards him. He could have gone around her. It could have caught up with Sadie any time. Has it been her walking stick keeping him back? Has he been afraid to be out ahead where he can't keep an eye on the human with the stick? Charlie laughs. It's almost as if Sadie knew that. Charlie wonders if she can manage the rest of the walk without the stick. Till you don't need it anymore, was all Tony said when, he, when she asked how long she had to use it. Maybe, just maybe, she's done with the stick. It isn't only Coyote who will be glad if she is. Progress. Her father will be thrilled. That is the end of chapter 8.